The purpose of this video is to leave you with a very interesting question to think about. We're now in the midst of talking about algebraic and geometric multiplicities. And we have just introduced defective matrices, which is matrices that have eigenvalues whose algebraic multiplicity exceeds the geometric multiplicity. But there is something somewhat unsatisfying about the concept of algebraic multiplicity, because it applies only to matrices and not to general linear transformations. The situation with geometric multiplicity is quite the opposite. The whole conversation started with a discussion of reflections in three dimensions, where the concept of geometric multiplicity was very clear and even vivid. And it is very easy to see how to apply that concept to general linear transformations. For example, consider the operation of the derivative on the space of cubic polynomials. As we discovered previously, there is a single eigenvalue that equals zero, and the corresponding eigenfunction is constant polynomials. And so the dimension of the eigenspace corresponding to this eigenvalue is one. And that's the geometric multiplicity of the zero eigenvalue. What is its algebraic multiplicity? Well, we're not even equipped to begin answering that question because we have not introduced the concept of the characteristic polynomial for general transformations and not even the concept of the determinant for general linear transformations. So then how do we define the concept of algebraic multiplicity for general linear transformations? In particular, are we able to categorize a general linear transformation as defective? In fact, this particular linear transformation on this space seems quite suspicious because we're dealing with a four dimensional space and there is a single eigenvalue. What's going on? Is this transformation more like a rotation where there isn't a full set of real eigenvalues, where there aren't as many real eigenvalues as the dimension of the space? Or is this transformation defective? And zero is in fact a multiple eigenvalue and the corresponding eigenspace is one dimensional. Well, it turns out it is defective. Later on, when we discuss component spaces, we will learn that every linear transformation can be represented by a matrix. And this linear transformation could be represented by this matrix. And then the linear transformation itself can be analyzed by studying the matrix. And this matrix that might represent, could represent this linear transformation, exhibits the classical pattern of a defective matrix. It has four of the same value on the diagonal, it's upper triangular. And the off-diagonal entries are not zero. And therefore, if we perform eigenvalue analysis on this matrix, we would conclude that zero is a quadruple eigenvalue of this matrix. Its algebraic multiplicity is four. And the corresponding eigenspace represented by the vector one, zero, zero, zero is one dimensional. So indeed, this is a quadruple eigenvalue with a one-dimensional eigenspace. So this matrix is defective and the defect is three. And therefore, the original linear transformation is defective and the algebraic multiplicity of this eigenvalue is four and the defect is three. So this is what we will be able to do when we introduce component spaces. But, and that's the question I'd like to leave you with, perhaps it is possible to introduce the concept of algebraic multiplicity directly. We're still in the mode where we prefer to treat all objects and all linear transformations on their own terms. So within that framework, by treating linear transformations on their own terms and not even thinking about their matrix representations, which will only come soon, is it possible to introduce the concept of algebraic multiplicity and therefore of a defective linear transformation. That's the question I'd like for you to think about as we're continuing to discuss defective matrices.